Welcome to the fourth lecture in the series of lectures, Silo Theorems. And in this lecture, we will prove Silo's second theorem and Silo's third theorem. So, mm, let us recall the statement. Let G be a group and P be a prime. And uh, suppose P divides the order of the group G. So, order of G can be written as P to the power N into M, where P does not divide M. So, we are to prove the two points A and B, where A is uh, Silo's second theorem and B is Silo's third theorem. So, what is A? If uh, H is a subgroup of order P to the power K of G, then H is contained in some Silo P subgroup of G. Means any subgroup of order P to the power K in group G will be contained in at least one silo p subgroup of g uh, silo second theorem says that uh, the number of silo p subgroups of g is equal to 1 plus pk means the total number of silo p subgroups of the group can always be written in the form 1 plus pk for some k which is whole number and 1 plus pk will divide the order of g and uh, further any two silo p subgroups of g are conjugate so we will prove both the theorems together and uh, for that we need to take one silo p subgroup suppose i take a silo p subgroup p1 of the group g which is which exists and is non-trivial because p divides the order of the group g okay so consider another set s this is the conjugacy class of p1 conjugacy class of p1 mean the set of all conjugates of p1 in g so the set s is the set of all conjugates of p1 in g and because we are on the finite set so assume that this set is p1 p2 and Pn, where P1 is our element which we have taken and P2, P3, P4 and so on are its conjugates. So now, so we will prove both the part A and B that is Silo's theorem second and third under the following observations. So observation number one is So, consider a map star which is from P1 cross S to S defined as for any element G in P1 define G star Pi where Pi is an element of capital S. So, G star Pi is equal to G Pi G inverse. It is quite easy to show that actually this map is an action. So I am leaving it for you to verify that a star is an action. Now if it is an action then it will have a class equation or class equation of the action. So we can write because P1 is acting on S so order of S is equal to the fixed point set of action SP1 the order of fixed point set plus the sum of order of orbits these are those orbits which is, has more than one elements and uh, yes of course as we know sp is the fixed point set that is those pi in s for which g star pi that is g pi g inverse is equal to pi for all g in p1 and uh, order of this OJ is greater than 1. Now, as we have discussed in our lecture group action 4, by orbit stabilizer theorem, order of OJ is equal to order of P1 upon order of stabilizer of PJ in P1, because P1 is acting. So, because order of OJ is greater than 1, so this fraction 
the value of this fraction will be more than 1 but p1 is order of p1 is p to the power n so it means that p will divide this order of oj so in this summation each oj will be divided by p so the whole summation will be divided by p okay now let us see what is the stabilize fixed point set so now sp is by definition those pi in s such that g pi g inverse is pi for all g in p1 if pi is in sp then g pi g inverse is pi for all g in p1 by definition so it can be written as g pi is equal to pi g for all g in p1 so it can be written as p1 pi is equal to pi p1 but we have observed that is observation number 7 in the lecture silo theorems 2 that under this situation both the silo subgroups should be equal so it means p1 should be pi it means if some pi belongs to sp then that pi should be p1 so it means sp have only one element that is p1 so order of sp is 1 so by the class equation of the action this order of s should be 1 plus p times something it means the set s which we have defined to be the conjugacy class of p1 that is set of all conjugates of p1 should be of the form 1 plus p k okay so now afterward we will show that actually this s will contains all the silo p subgroups so it will become the set of all silo p subgroups and we are to actually prove this result in this result for silo p subgroups so we have proved it for s and we will show that actually s contains all the silo p subgroups now next observation observation number two we will in this observation we will see that all silo p subgroups are in s yes so in this observation i we will show that all silo p subgroups are in s and if i take any subgroup h of g which is actually a p subgroup that is its order is p to the power k then there exists a silo p subgroup pi such that h will be contained in pi So we will show it so okay for showing it uh, let us again assume that h is a subgroup of g order of h is p to the power k and k is varying between 1 to n 1 and n and again now consider the action star this is the same action but uh, in place of p1 we have taken h so this is the star h cross s1 to s defined as g star pi to be g pi g inverse and pi belongs to s and g is uh, an element of h and uh, it is easy to verify that a star is an action so i am leaving it for you as an exercise to verify that a star is an action okay now Now consider the class equation for this action star again the order of s can be written as order of sh plus summation oj where oj is are the orbits of the action um, whose order is greater than 1 and sh is the fixed point set which is by definition those pi in s such that g pi g inverse is equal to pi for all g in h so let us see what 
are the elements in SH. So take a PI in SH, then it will satisfy this condition. So G PI G inverse is equal to PI for all G in H. So G PI is equal to PI G for all G in H. So H PI is equal to PI H. This we can write because it is true for all G. So it should be true for H PI and PI H. It is true for all G in H. So we replace it by H. So it should be true for H PI and PI H. Both should be equal. Because H PI consists of element of the form G PI. And each element is equal to this element. So both should be equal. Now by observation number 6 of our lecture Silo theorem 2, H should be a subgroup of PI. It means SH consists of those PI in S for which H is a subgroup of PI. If SH is not equal to 5, then it means there exist some silo subgroups in which H is contained and that is what we want to prove in part A. That is in silo theorem 2 we want to prove that H is contained in some silo P subgroup. So if SH is not empty then we have proved or there is nothing to do. But suppose SH is empty then what will happen? If SH is empty then the order of SH will be 0. So by class equation order of S will be 0 plus this. But the order of orbit is greater than 1 and P because H is a P group so P is going to divide each orbit. So it means P is going to divide this summation. So it means P going P is dividing the order of S. But this is a contradiction to observe our first observation that order of S is of the form 1 plus PK. So P does not P cannot divide order of S. And here we are saying that P is dividing order of S. It means this is a contradiction to our observation number 1 and this of contradiction arises due to our assumption that SH is equal to 5 so our assumption is wrong so it means SH is always non-empty so if H is, SH is always non-empty means in this set SH there are PIs which contains H so there are PIs which contains H and that is what we want to prove in silo theorem 2. So we have proved the silo theorem 2 that given any subgroup H there exist given any subgroup H of order p to the power k and g this H is contained in some silo p subgroup of g. So we have proved it. Now suppose H is actually the order of H is P to the power N means S H is itself a silo P subgroup suppose as we have observed that SH is non empty for any H and I have taken H to be a silo P subgroup means SH is equal to those PI in H such that H is contained in KI so this is those PI in H such that H is equal to PI. But we know that this set is non-empty. So it means that this H is actually equal to some PI in S. And this time it will be unique because S contains the distinct silo P subgroups. So it means 
if I take any silo P subgroup, then that silo P subgroup will belongs to S. So it means S contains all the silo P subgroups of G. So the number of silo P subgroups is equal to the order of S and order of S is of the form 1 plus Kp for some K varying from 0, 1, 2 and so on. So we have proved that so let us see from where we have started. I have taken a silo P subgroup. I took all the conjugates of that silo P subgroup. And we proved that any silo P subgroup of the group G will be in that set S. And the order of that set S will be of the form 1 plus PK. This also shows one thing that if I take any silo P subgroup P dash then that P dash will belong to S it means that P dash will be conjugate to P1 similarly if I take any another silo P subgroup P double dash then that P double dash will also be conjugate to P1 so P double dash can be written as H P1 H inverse for some H in G so P1 can be written as H P double dash H inverse. Now this is P1. So put the value of this P1 in this identity. So what will happen? G H inverse P double dash H G inverse is equal to G P1 G inverse is equal to P dash. It means P dash and P double dash are also conjugate. So given any two silo P subgroups both are conjugate. So what we have proved is that given any silo P subgroups P and P dash there exists an element of the group G such that both silo subgroups are conjugate. So we have proved that any two silo subgroups are conjugate. This is what we have to prove in silo theorem 3. Now So in these two observations, uh, what we have done is that we have proved all the facts which we are to prove in silo theorem second and third except one thing that the number of silo P subgroups divides the order of the group G. So now this we will prove in observation number three that is our next observation. So now by observation 2, the number of silo P subgroups is equal to order of S and that is the conjugacy class of P1. That is the set of all conjugates of P1 and uh, this is equal to 1 plus Kp for some K in this set. So now in lecture group action 4, we have shown that the order of G upon the order of normalizer of a subgroup and here we have taken P1 is equal to the conjugacy order of the conjugacy class of P1. Now what does it mean? It means the conjugacy the order of the conjugacy class of P1 will divide the order of the group G. So it means the order of S will divide the order of the group G. So 1 plus Kp will divide the order of the group G. So the number of silo P subgroups divides the order of the group G and that is what we want to prove. So thank you very much.